I'll do a real quick little video here to show you the very first Bible version I ever used. Uh, actually, I had thought for years and years and years that it was a King James Bible for children, but the reality of it is, looking through some a box of things that I had taken along from my childhood, and I didn't even think I had this, uh, my very first Bible, um, but it turns out right there it is. I couldn't believe it, and I was kind of shocked to see what it actually was. Let me show you what this thing is. You can see it here, the close-up here. It's a New American Standard Bible. Oh, boy. And uh, right there's me putting my name on it, Brian T. You know, T is my middle initial there. But uh, so I had a, a uh, New American Standard Bible. All these years I thought it was a King James, but no, it's definitely not a King James Bible. And um, just wanted to show you here, though, it's kind of funny. Even though I had a new version, and I don't believe I was saved back in these years, I did have one thing right. And uh, I don't know if you can see this here or not, but it says there, um, Catholics look. And Mary said, My soul exalts the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. Of course, that's not the right reading. You know, it's, it's uh, the right one that would be found in the King James Bible. But just very interesting that, you know, I was not raised King James only. If you're out there, you're watching these videos, and you think that I was raised in this cult-like mentality of King James onlyism, uh, I wasn't. I definitely was raised in the modern church system, and uh, just incredible to look back and to think coming from things falling apart, which is very accurate for the New American Standard Bible. But um, just interesting, you know, all the things that the Lord has shown me over the years uh, after I've gotten saved and uh, just how I was so deceived back then as a child, even though I had some elements of truth. I was a church-going, you know, professing Christian, but uh, looking at the thing, weighing it all out, I wasn't saved. And that's why I have a, a real great burden for people that are in the modern church system, because I'm from that system myself. Um, the church buildings have deceived more people than any other system out there. And uh, there's a lot of people that are going to these things that are just as lost as any drunkard or prostitute or whatever. You know, people think that they're saved because they're members of a building that they call a church. And uh, I know I talk about that a lot, but brethren, I'll tell you what, it's, it's a great, great deception. That, uh, and I don't mean good by great either. I mean, it's a very serious deception. I was deceived. All those years I used this thing, thinking it was the Word of God, and it wasn't. You know, and and I was sincere. You know, I I really truly believed that this book was God's word, but it wasn't until the Lord saved me that then He revealed to me the true word of God, the King James Bible. You know, there's a reason this book's been around for so long. Okay, trends come and go, fashions come and go, styles come and go, but the book remains. 1611 to 2014, 403 years. That's a long time. And, uh, you know, a lot of people will attack this book and they'll say this book is poorly translated and whatever else. Um, if that were true, if this was not really truly God's preserved word right here, this King James Bible, authorized King James Version, if that was true, then uh, why wouldn't God have gotten rid of this thing by now? I mean, if this thing is spreading heresy and spreading all kinds of evil, horrible, corrupt things around, if this is not the real true word of God, then it certainly would be false, so it would be spreading false doctrine. If that was true, why didn't God get rid of it? God's gotten rid of the revised version of 1881, the American Standard Version of 1901. The NIV, they have to continually revise the thing uh, just to keep the sales up. That's owned by lost people, too. You can check into that. Just incredible. So, you know, if you're a modern Christian out there and you really don't know about this Bible version issue, uh, I encourage you to go to our website. You can watch, uh, I don't even know how many videos now. Uh, I need to get back actually and put more videos up. But the fact is there are hundreds of videos for free. 
You don't have to join anything. You don't have to, you know, come and be part of the special partakers club that, you know, allows you to get into all the sections of the website. You can get into anything on the website you want to. Okay, there are lots and lots of free information there. So I would encourage you to check this issue out. If you're instantly using one of these new versions and you really truly believe, it, truly believe it's God's Word, you need to look into it. This New American Standard Bible, as well as the NIV, which is what I went to after the New American Standard Bible, I had this thing until I was 10 years old, then I got an NIV, used it for another 15 years. I was 25 years old before I heard about the Bible version issue for the first time. And, you know, these new versions come from the Vatican. It's kind of funny. I was cutting on the Vatican and, and put little notes in there as a, as a little boy saying things about Catholics, and yet I was using a Vatican version. Going to a church building that was doing a lot of the things that come from the Catechism and not from the Bible. And it was an independent Bible church, too, by the way. Please study this issue if you don't know about it. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching.